Well, good morning, everyone. A subscriber contacted me yesterday looking for advice on how to remove a skunk that's living beneath his cottage. He had this problem in the past, and he hired a professional, and it cost him about 150 bucks to remove the skunk. He doesn't want to go that route again, and I can't blame him there. So he was looking for advice on a good trap to invest in and how to go about the process without getting sprayed. Again, I can't blame him there either. <laughs> so he asked if I had experience in the matter, which I do. Not only do I have experience, I've got little bits and pieces of video footage of a skunk removal. So instead of answering him in a private message, I'll put a little video together with the footage that I have, and then others can benefit from it as well. So let's get started. <laughs> Hey folks, I've got some new tenants here at the homestead, and it's time to send out the eviction notice. While I was away, skunks tunneled in beneath the house here, so I've got to get rid of them. Now because the skunk is entering my house right here, it would be common practice to set the trap right here where the critter is entering and exiting. I don't want to have a skunk in a cage right alongside my house like this. A stray dog might come in the yard, harass the skunk, then the skunk sprays, gets my house all stinky, and it's right beneath my bedroom window. So I'm going to start out by setting the trap away from the house a little ways. The skunk will certainly find the bait. Hopefully I can catch them all away from the house. If they spray over there, it won't be such a bother as it would be right beneath my window, like I said. If this was a raccoon, I'd set the trap right here. But there's a lot of issues with the skunks. I don't want them spraying next to the house. So I set the trap away from the house last night. Caught a skunk. I'll show you how I will deal with him without getting sprayed. Now here's an old shower curtain, it wasn't suitable for the shower anymore, but it's still in good shape. I hate to throw them out, I find many uses for them. I always keep one folded up under the seat of the vehicle, that way if I'm putting something messy in the vehicle like a, a fuel can or an oily chainsaw or something of that nature, I just put it on this and I don't get my Jeep all messed up. So anyway. When I'm approaching the skunk in the cage, I walk nice and slow with this in front of me as a shield. I let it drag on the ground a little bit in case the animal does spray. I've got a shield here. I have never had one spray when they were in a cage, but might as well play it safe. This little shower curtain is just the right size for me to handle. So I walk up to the skunk like this with a shower curtain hanging down to protect my legs. I drape it over the cage, slow and steady, just enough to reach the ground on the opposite side of the cage and leave the long side hanging down on my side. I grab the handle through the plastic, carry him off, piece of cake. I've been in the nuisance wildlife control business for a long time. And over the years, I've used a lot of different traps. And over the years, I've had to repair a lot of different traps. Eight or nine years ago, I bought one of these here. This is from the Safeguard Animal Trap Company. This one is 36 inches long, 11 by 12. I'll put a more common size in the description below, which is 30 inches long. After using one of these, I ended up selling all my other ones, and I invested in more of them. As you shop around, you will see there's a wide range in prices from one company to another, but when you get in the meat and potatoes behind the scenes, there's a wide range in quality. I needed to depend on my equipment. These here have not let me down. To set the trap, you simply push up on this locking device, push this lever in, pick up the door, then there's a little hook right here 
that goes back on this rod to the trigger mechanism. You just pull that hook so it holds the door up and that's it. It's very important to have your cage stable on the ground. If it's rocky, the animal's a little bit nervous, he goes to step inside, the cage tips or jiggles, he might chicken out. He's still going to want the bait, however, then he's going to start climbing on top of it and whatnot to try and get it. The one thing I really like about these safeguard traps, when they are set, they're not real hair triggered like the other brands. Animal can reach in, rattle the cage around, climb on top, even put his weight on the door here, and it doesn't misfire. Once the animal goes inside, though, however, touches that platform, you got him, and he's not getting away. Now, for bait, I prefer to use cooked chicken. Chicken carcass, chicken bones, the chicken neck, the gizzards, whatever. The raw stuff works just fine, but I do have better success using the cooked meat and another benefit to using the cooked stuff is if you have the trap set near your house for a while, the raw meat will get rancid and track flies a lot quicker than the cooked meat. Also want to check your local game laws because like here in New York State, it's against the law for the homeowner to relocate a wild animal. Kind of a stupid law, but it is what it is. Either that or you just run on the don't ask, don't tell theory. <laughs> One more thing I'd like to add, if you're going to set your trap and maybe you forget to check it in the morning or you're not going to be around all day and the trapped animal might be out in the direct sun all day, even though it might be a pesky skunk, have a little compassion, lay a piece of plywood or something over the trap so if you do have an animal caught in a cage, he's not out in the blazing sun all day. I want to do it in the the most humane manner that you can. It's always a good principle to run with. So, I put a link in the description below. You can look at some different traps and different brands. If you're a do-it-yourself like I am, I like to save money every chance I can and taking care of the projects myself and not hiring a professional, well, is going to save you a bunch of money. Like I always say, folks, saving a bunch of money, well, <laughs> That's just good backwards logic. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did and you'd like to see more of The Cabin Life, please click the subscribe button so that you can follow along with future updates. All the best to you and God bless.